So today we are going to another doctor's appointment. We're going to see a pulmonologist. Uh, for those who don't know what a pulmonologist is, um, basically they are a respiratory doctor. Um, my breathing, uh, I mean, I feel like I'm like a lot better than definitely when I first started. Uh, still got a little ache in this area and then like when I breathe it like extends to a point to there's like a little ache in there but um I'm definitely feeling much better I feel 90% right now uh I definitely gotta you know still continue to work on my breathing um and or lung capacity of the breathing and then i also got to start exercising more start uh trying to gain my strength back even though i didn't really lose a lot of strength but i'll see y'all when we get to the office Hello. how are you good yeah uh, hospital yeah yeah November 23rd, right? From the new car, from the new car. That's a, uh, that blood clot in your lung. Yeah. The rest of my blood. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You didn't have any blood clot in your legs, that's right? Because uh, the, uh, the story that I told him uh -huh. earlier this year when COVID really started to right. hit, I gained weight. So I went out and started walking and doing like slight jogs. Uh -huh. And my right leg, like the calf area, would become like start hurting. And then my hands would turn blue and go numb. So I don't know if that is like. Well, what? that's where the blood clots came from. Okay. It starts from the legs. When you move around, yeah. it embolizes, goes to your lung. Okay. It gets the sludge. Uh, Okay, and your corona test was negative. Okay. Uh, are you on uh, eloquence right now? Yes. How's your breathing going? Uh, actually way better now. Way better? Yeah. I still got to get up, because I'm doing the spirometer every, yeah. every hour or so. Okay. They want me at 2,500. Right now I'm at like 2,250. Oh, no, you're doing good. Yeah. We're going to check your lungs right now with the breathing test. Come <laughs> Yeah, I'm doing like a. I didn't want to get like doctor's okay. face and stuff. Yeah, I'm doing like a little documentary yeah. type thing. Is it like a, a video? Or? Yeah, it's on video. Hello. Hello. I'm just going to put your information in and we'll get started, okay? Okay. Yeah. All right, let's get started, okay? okay? So for the first test we're going to do, we're going to start with regular breathing first. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you to take a very deep breath in and you're going to sharply blast the breath out. You're going to keep blowing and blowing and blowing, okay? Mm -hmm. So even if there's nothing there, still keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Okay. All right, you can take down your mask for me. I'll hold it from there. There you go. This goes in your mouth, past your teeth. This goes on your nose. Okay, regular breathing through your mouth. Just breathe normally. You ready? Take a deep breath in. And blow sharp. Blow, don't breathe in, don't breathe in, don't breathe in. Push, 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 breathe in deep. Good. Okay, regular breathing. Deep breath in and blow sharp. Blow, don't breathe in, don't breathe in, don't breathe in, don't breathe in. Blow, 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 blow. Okay, took a breath in too soon. That's okay. We'll do that again, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, regular breathing. Mm 
Ready, deep breath in. And blow sharp. Blow, don't breathe in, 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 breathe in. Good. All right, let me calibrate the next test, okay? Okay. Regular breathing, take a deep breath in and blow out normally. Continue to blow nice and steady until I tell you to breathe back in. Okay. When you breathe back in, you're going to have a lot of air coming towards you here. So you're going to breathe in deep and then hold it. You'll hold it for eight seconds and then I'll say blow. You have to blow nice and steady out. I'll talk to you step by step, okay? okay. okay. Let's just wait until it's done. Okay, hold it from here. This goes on your nose. Regular breathing through your mouth. Ready? Deep breath in. And blow nice and steady. Blow, 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 blow. Deep breath in. And hold it. Tight seal. Hold that breath hold it hold it hold it hold it you have five more seconds four almost there three two one and blow 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 breathe in and blow out thank you i'll take that okay last one okay this one's gonna be regular breathing take a deep breath in and blow normally for as long as you can okay Later, I'll start oxygen, but I'll talk you through that once we get there, okay? Here we go. Regular breathing through your mouth. Ready? Deep breath in. And blow normally. Blow, 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 blow. Breathe in. And regular breathing. Good job. Just breathe normally. Now I'm going to start oxygen. Get ready. Deep breath in. And blow out. Deep breath in. And blow out. Deep breath in. And blow. 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 Good. Perfect. Thank you. I'll take that. We're all done, okay? Okay. I'm just going to print this out. Just give me a moment, okay? Okay. 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 okay Mr. Hunter. Mm -hmm. uh, spirometry test does not show any active asthma. The ratio is normal. Okay. Total lung capacity. Uh, um, predicted for your 6.43 liters, we measure 3.94 liters. Mm -hmm. That's 61 percent of what it's supposed to be. Right. Vital capacity 64 percent. There is moderate restriction of your lung expansion mm -hmm. because of the pulmonary influx and the fluid that you have in your chest. Right. Absorptive capacity for oxygen is excellent, good, 105 mm -hmm. percent. That means that most likely the blood clots are gone. Mm -hmm. That's why you're able to absorb that. Okay. okay. So like. When I breathe in uh -huh. and take like a full breath, it's, like this part uh -huh. right here, it feels like, you know. That's where you had the full breathing uh, from. Let me bring up your x ray, tax scan. Yeah, they never showed me none of those pictures. Mm -hmm. So, this is your right lung, left lung, front of the chest, the spine, and the back. Uh -huh. That's your windpipe. These white spots are blood vessels in your lungs. Mm -hmm. And now we can see there's fluid at the left left chest. Yeah. Between the lung and the chest wall, I see. That's the area you have pain. Okay. So that's where what we call pulmonary infarct. Okay. Blood flow didn't get there because of the blood clot. Yeah. Gotcha. And that caused some damage to the lung, you see? Mm-hmm. Uh, all of this. And Right side is okay.
But these are blood clots. Okay, the dark dark, dark spot. spot. You see that dark spot? Yeah. That's a blood clot. Oh, you had another cat scan after that. Yeah, and I have, I had a uh, blood clot in my arm as well. It was superficial. Yeah. That was a superficial uh, clot. This is the second cat scan on November 27. Okay. So the fluid increased. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a large amount of fluid now. Did, so, what? What uh, fluid is that? It's, uh, it's a lymphatic fluid okay. caused by inflammation of pleura because of the pulmonary infarct and the blood clot. Okay. Okay. So that's why. And then we had to, and then you had a little bit of pneumonia on that side, right side too. Yeah, they gave me a antibiotic yes. and a probiotic. Yeah. And then we removed the fluid mm. from your lung uh body fluid i think and they said it was like 500 yeah 500 so there was no bacteria in there so that's good and uh, we didn't see any uh atypical cells there was no cancer cells in the fluid okay. and then let me see results chest x-ray on december 1st mm -hmm. That was the day before I got out. Left the uh, so the pneumonia is better, okay? Mm -hmm. Here and st a small amount of fluid there. Right. So I'm going to repeat another chest x ray. Okay. To see what's going on. Now I want to listen to your lungs, okay? Okay. Uh, so have a seat up there. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Deep breath. Deep breath. Good. Maybe there's still a small amount of fluid there. Yeah, it's like right here. Right about there, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, your oxygen level is Pretty good, 99%, this is excellent right now. So, do you need any prescription for the inhaler? No, I have an inhaler at home already. Uh, how about for the Eliquis? Uh, I should be good. You have to stay on that for six months altogether. Okay. Do you have refills? Uh, no refills. Okay, I'll give you. That's for the end of this, okay? Okay. What kind of work do you do? Uh, so I got like three jobs. Uh huh. Uh, one is Best Buy. Best Buy? Yeah. So you got the camera from Best Buy? Yeah. <laughs> I do uh, asset protection. Uh huh. And then they started moving me around like cashier and sales floor. Okay, very good. I coach at. Oh, good. What yeah. do you coach? Uh, high school football, the yeah, varsity yeah, school, varsity, yeah. and then I work at uh, Jiffy Jiffy also. Okay. The uh, concert venue one. All right, very good. So you pay three hundred twenty-five dollars. Yeah. Since I've seen you at the hospital, we're gonna change that to one fifty. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Uh, question. So oh. as far as exercise, yeah. uh, am I no limit. We can do it. I can do anything. Yeah. Uh, and as far because I used to play flag football, uh -huh. so am I, or should I just hold off? Be on careful that? because right now you're on a blood thinner. Yeah. If you get trauma to the head, it may bleed in the brain. Right. So be careful with that. Yeah, because yeah, it's not like 
Yeah. You know, full on contact. It's just yeah, you can get but if you yeah. get knocked down and head slam somewhere, you can get bleeding there. Gotcha. Okay. Understood. And then they told me to go to the ER just in case. If uh, so, I didn't make it like X-ray. Yeah. If you have, if you have head trauma. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. All right. Stay safe. Uh, get the chest up there. I'll have them uh, send me the report. Okay. And then if, it, if the pain persists, make another appointment. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So we are on our way to Alexandria to go play some football. We're going to see. I know I shouldn't really jump into it this early, but I'm, you know, the doctor said, you know, I can exercise and play football again and all that. And I figured what's the best way to, to see where my lungs at, see where our, my body's at, and to do the thing that I love to do. So we're about to head up here, uh, play some pickup flag football and see where we're at. Uh, I'm just excited to be back. Be playing football again. I love this sport, man. But I see y'all on the field. I just see your second alley. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey Louis, I'm gonna go. Okay. So you go right. right I'm both going. going? Yeah. That means you got made up. Yeah. Or whatever side the trips is on, that's the side I'm going to. Okay. So you gotta watch that yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Devontae, you go opposite the trips. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, guys, guys, guys. Trips left, trips left. Blitz! Oh no, no, no! Still got the little ache right here but that'll eventually go away uh we're right now since we're in in alexandria already might as well go um go back to where it all started let's take a trip Uh, we're here kind of where it all started at here at Groverton Elementary School um, this is the same school from remember the Titans that Groverton um, the black and yellow or black and gold school uh, I remember the school being much much bigger than this but uh this is where the buses would come, you know, unload all the people. And it's a uh, two level height, I mean, elementary school. Cause like I said, it used to be a high school. You know, you can see the stairs right there. It used to be a high school 
until they converted it down if if I'm not mistaken but uh I I had the best times here I went here from uh for like four years about four years um you know I had a few friends uh and then I had like a few crushes here as well you know uh a lot of a lot of the people a lot of the girls who went here were like white girls though uh you know i don't have a preference but you know it didn't really see a lot of i saw more black guys than black girls besides my uh the few friends that i had from my neighborhood which were going to stop by next um besides those from the neighborhood i didn't really see any you know not a lot of black friends around here uh, I, don't, I don't remember that playground being there maybe it was always there but we we never really went to it for like recess we would always go down this hill which is going to be up around here matter of fact i'm sorry that that's not where the buses would be. This is where the buses would be, right? You know, they all load up right here. Uh, double lane. You got one bus row here. One bus row there. And then you got to run around and fire, find your bus. And then if you don't find your bus, your bus is going to leave you. And then you got to find a ride home. And I always, I always hated that, man. I always hated that. I mean, of course, you would have, like teachers and administration out here you know trying to help uh if you were lost you know they'll try to help you find your bus and whatnot i remember they had this huge well it wasn't it it was a good size library bro and i remember scholastic book fairs where we would like try to you know save save up all, all of our money and usually we would get posters usually um i ended up getting like an emma smith poster and a new york jets poster i don't even know why i got the new york jets poster because i'm not even a jets fan but then again you know they had wayne Corbett, Chester Vardy, uh curtis martin you know they they were nice back then but uh yeah, I don't, I don't even remember this playground. Not really. But, doesn't look all right. Yeah, because I, I, I've never been to this part. Never been to this part. I remember uh, also my first grade teacher, Miss Bates, man. I, it was one day. She was like asking questions and whatnot. And oh, I don't think we can go. Yeah, I don't think we can go on this side. And she was asking questions. And I was answering them back to back to back. Like, cause, cause nobody would, you know, answer the questions or whatnot. Which is kind of weird because now, well, when I got into middle school or high school, you know, I never really was a class participator. Like, when you know teachers ask people questions you know people should raise their hand and answer the questions i was never one of those people who would uh raise their hand and answer the questions but on that day she was asked a question after question i was answering after answer and she was like boy you made me want to jump up and give you a big old kiss i was like whoa hold on now you're like you're like 50 i'm only eight chill out but uh <laughs> um and then I had a, I think my second grade teacher. Ah, uh, was it my second grade? Second grade teacher, Miss Perkins. Yeah, either second grade or third grade. I had a teacher, Miss Perkins, man. Real nice lady, man. Uh, can't remember who my third grade teacher was. But, uh, can't remember my. Oh yeah, tell me why, All right? Weird story. 
I went. So we were on the bathroom break. I believe it was first grade or whatever. And I really had to pee. Matter of fact, this is, I'm going to tell y'all the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me, all right? We're going to keep this on the look. All right. It's between me, you, and the rest of the people who are watching this video. All right. So, like I said, uh, I think it was ki kindergarten or first grade. I just remember art class or whatnot. And we were on a bathroom break. So, you know, people get in line. And then we got our single file line. We walked uh, to the bathroom. We line up on the wall and then people go in the bathroom and uh, uh, you gotta wait till they come out and then you gotta go in the bathroom. I don't know what happened, but I was not paying attention. Somebody, I just seen somebody cross my face. So I was like, oh, it's my time. And I ran in the bathroom. And for some reason, I seen urinals, right? So I'm about to, you know, pull down my pants, finna pee and whatnot. And then I realized, because I looked to the left, right? There was a girl washing her hands. And then my best friend at the time, well, she wasn't really my best friend. She was like a girl that I really knew. And her name was like uh, Danielle Boone, right? And she was opening the stall I believe to either go in or come out. Either way, she was opening her stall, right? And then uh, she was like, Michael, what are you doing in here? I'm like, this is the boy's bathroom. She was like, no, this is the girl's bathroom. I'm like, no, this is the boy's bathroom. She was like, no, this is the girl's bathroom. And then I looked back at the girl who was uh, washing her hands. She was like, yeah, this is the girl's bathroom. I'm like, what the hell? And then I walked out, looked at the sign. That joint said, girl's bathroom, bro. I was so sick. And tell me why my classmates, right? They watched me and my teacher. They watched me run in there. My teacher didn't even go in the bathroom and be like, hey, Mike, what are you, what are you doing? You're in the wrong bathroom, right? They let me fail. They let me fail. That's crazy. And then, then when I come out of the bathroom, they all want to laugh and giggle. Hee 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 hee. I should hee 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 y'all in y'all face. Yeah. But yeah, that's the most embarrassing story about me. Uh, yeah, I remember uh, we would be on top of those stairs over there. And then there was this girl named Sky. And uh, I really like her. White girl. Gotta be about 4'8ish, 4'9ish. At, at the time, because like I said, we were in elementary school. And uh, I thought she was like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And I really wanted her. And we would have this big ass cafeteria. And when I spotted her, you know, I would just wave at her and say hi and all that. I told her I like her, but she wasn't feeling me. So, you know, it's still the story of my life today, you know. Nobody feeling me. But, you know, it is what it is. I ain't everybody's cup of tea. Maybe I might have to leave Virginia or something. But, uh, yeah, I think they gated off the whole damn thing. Got a guy playing golf. Don't want to interrupt your swing. Yeah, if I'm not tripping, this ain't no way to... Damn, this school is a lot smaller than what I remember. Oh, yeah, because I was small, so everything looked big. Pause. Um... Uh, we used to have a uh, field day, track and field day, uh, sports days, you know, scholastic, all this, all this stuff. And then uh, I would, I was like, in my grade, I was the most athletic. I, I can never do a backflip or anything. I'm not, you know, hood athletic, you know, or that athletic, period. But uh, we would have like races and stuff. We would uh, we would uh do sprints, like fifty yard sprints, four yard sprints. We have sprint sprint downs and sprint backs. We would have like just everything, man. If we had a track, we'd probably do like the whole track and field thing. But for some reason, 
I just remember going down a big ass hill. But then again, like I said, I was a kid, so everything was a lot different. But uh, yeah, man, that's one of my memories from here. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just, you know, used to that hill and then we just come down and ah, memories. All right, let's go to my old neighborhood. This is the apartment we used to live in. Um, it was called a uh, Groverton apartment, but now like new management came in and now it's known as Lafayette, Lafayette. So, but yeah, uh, we used to live like all the way in the back right. That apartment right there, all the way in the back right. And it was a uh, two bedroom, one bathroom, living room. Uh, it was my mom and dad. Well, first how it started was uh, my mom, dad, my two sisters, and me. One of my sisters moved out. My oldest uh, sister, she moved out. And oh, I remember this one thing. Like when when she uh, lived here, uh, there was I think. I think we left the uh, balcony door open, right? You know, just to get some air in the house. And um, a bird flew in, dog. Like a bird literally flew in our house and like was, you know, flying every everywhere in the living room. And um, like we tried to get blankets and everything. We tried to get just everything to smack it out the air and whatnot. You know, you never want to hurt hurt or kill animals, but, you know, we we just had to, you know, try to get that joint out of here. You know, and uh, it eventually flew out. But uh, I, I remember because they, they were laughing at me because I, I was, I wasn't crying. I was like whimpering or whatever. And I was under the table, you know, trying to, you know, get them to get the bird out of here. Because I, I, I don't know, it, it was some, like, what, what? what bird is going to fly into somebody's house like come on now that bird was evil pure pure damn evil dog trying to you know i didn't know if he was trying to attack me or kill me or whatever but uh yeah uh a lot of great memories so i was supposed to get on the bus right my parents my parents trusted that i was going to get on that bus right and so my parents uh, trusted that I was going to get on the bus, right? All by myself. The bus stop is actually, matter of fact, we're going to walk down there, right? And um, I fell asleep. Uh, actually, no, it's two occasions. One time I fell asleep. My father, he came, he came home. I, I don't know why he came home. But he came home. I don't, I don't. I don't know if the school might have called him and said your son isn't present, or he just probably forgot something and decided to come back home. But uh, he came back home and he saw me sleeping on the couch. And he was like, "What are you? What are you doing? Like, how, like why? Why are you not on the bus?" I was like, "I don't know. I was knocked out." So there was that one, right? And then after that it happened again i fell asleep and uh you saw the, you saw the long road all right it's about 2.6 about three miles right to the school i decided that i was going to walk to school so we i walked like straight down and then walked the way we came in i because if you there's like three entrances there is the entrance that's behind this camera there's the entrance that that we just took and then there if you go all the way straight down it's the backside entrance so i walked all the way straight down turned right started going up the hill and then out of nowhere 
because I have my coat, I have my book bag on as well. I know where a school bus stop. Decided to pick me up and take me to school, man. Uh, what other stuff? Oh yeah, I remember my dad was trying to uh, teach me how to ride a bike, right? And so we were, I, I didn't, just like every kid, you know, uh, when, when they start riding a bike, because when, when you're trying to ride a bike, right, the first thing you're taught is the motion, you know, how to pedal and go and whatnot. You're never taught how to brake, right? So we were pedaling, and I started, like, right here, right? And then I started pedaling, and then my dad, like, he had, you know, how, how they hold you or whatnot, hold the handlebars or whatnot. He, he was holding the handlebars, and then he let me go. And all of a sudden, I went from here, I angled, and then probably like where that Jeep is, I hit a car. And then I fell on the ground. Uh, what other memories do I have? I mean, there's there's like so many memories, man. Um, I, I had two friends, uh, Ikea and Trey. Now, Danielle Boone, she was my friend, but we never really like hung out so she was a friend but she wasn't like close friend ikea and trey majors man these two were like like my bestest bestest friends at the time right and well yeah they were like my bestest bestest friends like i was spending night well i only spent the night at the house like one time and this this is going to age us but this is like when SpongeBob first came out, right? When SpongeBob first came out, we literally watched the very first episode of SpongeBob when it came out, dog. And uh, they lived. I want to say this joint, and then they lived like right there at the bottom. Uh, and then they moved to Maryland, and then we hung out with them, uh, spent the night as they joined Maryland. Uh, and it was fun. And then that's when I, that's when I realized that, uh, like I had a fear of mannequins. For some reason, I was scared of mannequins. You know, the, the mannequin heads that people, you know, do the hair on. For some reason, I was, I was afraid of those. I don't know why. But uh, this is the bus stop right here at the corner. I see they cut down the trees and whatnot. But that, that's uh, where the bus stop was for elementary school. You know, just an easy walk by. My parents were comfortable, you know, just let me walk there because it's right there and all the parents, you know, they'd be there. Ain't nobody gonna kidnap us and whatnot. Uh, this right here is where it all started. Where I found my love for football, man. Right here. I mean, like I said, when I was a kid, it was a lot, you know, this field was a lot bigger. First off, they didn't have this fence here. This fence was not here at all, all right? Uh, I believe there was actually one more tree here. But uh, I found my love for football here. Uh, speaking of this tree, I hate this tree because uh, I forgot what happened. I was standing under the tree and a bird pooped on me and I was so pissed it pooped literally right on never mind the ashiness but right on the crack I mean the uh in between of the index and the thumb finger man I was so pissed dog so pissed and then what else? Uh, we will always come back here, run around and whatnot. All right, so where that direct TV sign is up there, that's where I used to live. Uh, a lot of crazy things happen in the house that I can't speak of, but you know, um, so that's where I used to live. Uh, I used to, so this pathway was a pathway to the backside of the neighborhoods also still in the complex um uh, like i said 
all these fences were not here none of these fences were here these houses these houses look new i don't even think these joints were here either i wonder if that's property a lot but well, anyways none of these fences were here it was all all grass right all grass and then i had a friend named uh joshua whitaker right white boy cool cool dude but his mom was like very protective of him he was like he had a sister a little sister but i i think they didn't have a father figure or, or whatnot i could be wrong but i every time i went to his house i never seen his dad there right and uh he introduced me to uh nintendo 64 and because at the time i was playing uh uh super nintendo he introduced me to uh nintendo 64 and uh i fell in love with the whole system uh which house did he live in i mean i don't even think i should be showing people's houses like this but uh he used to live in this this house right here like we would enter through the back and then uh we would just just hop on the game like his mom was like real cool she would uh, just let me in this uh bottom joint with this these two chairs right here uh she would just you know let me in and we, you know we just chill out hang out game uh you know we play like super smash bros played uh pokemon games uh he also introduced me to uh, game boy advance as well uh you know it got me into that uh so with all that pokemon stuff going on it got me into you know uh pokemon cards and i still i still have a lot of the first cards that ever came out charizard Bulbas bulbasaur venusaur uh blast toys hip hitmon champ hitmon lee uh i still got a whole bunch of the first cars that ever came out so if anybody's ever interested you know just hit me up and we can talk but uh i'm probably already have a post out about that before this video even comes out but on this hill right here right we used to have uh foot races right and it'd be me ikea trey my sister uh just like all the kids in the neighborhood we would just run around and whatnot you know they they had this um foot pedal go-kart you know it had it had like the pedals on it and whatever and, you know everybody wanted to ride that uh i think it was trays you know and uh we just we just had so much fun bro uh we used to go in this playground this playground actually used to be bigger it had its swings and whatnot uh i used to love swinging man i used to i used to want to uh go around the world with it but i can never do it plus i was scared that if i go like 180 you know i might just fall straight down and my head hit the pole all right uh i also remember this road right here um I had a basketball i was with my one of my boys right and uh i think either he dropped the basketball either it hit the curb right and then rolled it in the street but one of us dropped the ball right and it rolled and then some car speeding on run over the ball and it just stopped right there on you know these kids nowadays they don't they don't have that feeling of what it's like when they when they uh you know when a ball gets stuck under the car or whatever they don't have that feeling no more also let me tell y'all what else is new so this was not here i'm gonna be honest this was not here the playground was more in the middle and then this this uh street soccer joint this was not here i don't even remember this this was not here at all the playground was right here in the middle 
they had a swing set and maybe the jungle gym and whatever that pool uh which we're about to go up and walk to and then i can tell y'all a story about my first near-death experience uh about being in the pool but the pool right i feel like this joint it might have been right here but then i remember like i said uh, me me josh and his mom we were all cool right obviously so uh she would pitch like we were playing baseball she would pitch me the ball and i remember one time i just hit that joint and uh that joint had to go 200 feet 200 feet and as a kid as a kid think about it even though it was an underhand pitch so you know it's not a fastball or anything like that for a kid to hit a 200 yard well not 200 yard 200 feet ball you know that that's pretty amazing but uh all right so they had the little mini pool right here for the kids right this is usually where i would go but you know my family was here my god my god mom was here by the way i'm gonna tell a story about my god mom when we go back uh and then i remember this big ass pool right so how it is is you got your two feet so from this side going to this side it increases so you got two three four five six seven all the way to 12 feet you know i was starting to two feet obviously at the time i was about four eight ish right so i'm thinking you know if i go to the four foot i'll be straight and you know my head will still be above water because you know i'm eight inches taller but that's not how it went for some reason that joint was deeper than what i thought and i'm sitting here trying to tread water by the way i couldn't swim at all and to this day i still can't swim so i was one of those people who uh, like walk in the water and whatnot so i'm you know dipping below the water hopping up trying to you know get my head above water and everything and you know all of a sudden i'm below water but i'm still walking and all of a sudden somebody picked me up put me on the thing uh on the uh walkway and i was straight oh damn no they did not do that so there used to be a long long ass hill right and it would go all the way back to where that house is and that's where the basketball courts was and i remember i almost got into my first fight here because uh i was schooling some dude right uh it, it, it was a kid around, matter of fact it was the same kid that i was with who let the ball or accidentally had the ball go under the uh the car right schooling him, right because as a kid i used to be nice at shooting i don't know why but after i broke my leg which is a story i'm gonna tell later uh after i broke my leg i just you know i used to kind of jump high uh which is which is good because you want to jump over you know you want to be able to see over the defender and plus with me being my height i was five three ish five two at the time so i would have to jump high to see over the defender but uh but yeah i'm schooling this dude right he got mad and threw my ball in the woods dog and all of this all that in the on, let me get a little closer so y'all can first off how the hell did this car get back here is what i want to know but uh it used to be i don't remember that well being like i said it used to be all uh all woods back there nothing but woods like all the way to that house right there 
this house and this this joint complex whatever townhouse whatever was not there it was not there it was all woods and then basketball court right here and then they had like a little beach volleyball joint right here and i remember uh, me and my friends we were standing on the sand and then out of nowhere a cicada i don't know why it was buried under the sand maybe it's where they live i don't know i don't know that much about cicadas but i do know they love trees um just popped up out of the sand right and then just started chasing us i'm like what what is going on here this joint just started literally chasing us out of nowhere you know so there's that uh what else man there's a, there, there's a lot of memories man about this place man uh used to go love doing trick-or-treating this first area where i've uh found out about ding dong ditch uh we used to do that especially it was hard doing that because you're in an apartment so all they had to do was open the door and you know watch you especially if you do it all the way on the third floor you know they can literally just open the door and just you know look through the glass and see who's running away i mean it's not it's not really that hard yes uh forgot quick story before i leave out so in this apartment right uh this 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 is how i met my godma right my mom was pregnant with me at the time and i think she was uh taking some clothes down to i think she was going to the laundry mat or something there, there's no laundry room in here so you you have to uh drive down to the laundry mat and do it. but I, I i don't i don't i don't remember but i remember my mom she would walk upstairs right and my lady who then became my godma she used to live right there on that top floor right and she uh she came out she helped my mom and then after that uh they became friends they started talking more uh they started hanging out and what all that uh she's actually who got us going to the church a lot uh i would you know come over and you know hang out with her godson i mean uh i would come over and hang out with her son her son was in high school real cool dude though um he had a ride to penn state a full ride to penn state and he um ended up having a kid at the time or getting a female pregnant so he couldn't uh go to penn state which is uh sad because you know he he was he was nice at football uh he was a safety and a wide receiver uh you know but he also like i said josh got me into uh uh nintendo but he also got me into sports games and you know their favorite team was the redskins and i was grown uh with my with my family being from texas i was born into like in the cowboys so uh you know we would always play redskins versus cowboys game he would beat me i would beat him you know it, it was it was fun it was cool uh you know also having like a brother because i grew up with two older sisters you know i don't have a brother still don't have a brother so you know that that was like the only brother figure that i had in in my life until you know i met my boy uh mike james which when i get home i'm gonna tell y'all my the story of my life as soon as i got to where i live now um uh, yeah man being back here just brings back so many memories, dog. Like, so many memories. But it's time for me to get on out of here, man. I've been out here for way too long.